Thank you for joining us today. My name is April Callahan and I am a Special Collections Library Associate and Curator of Manuscript Collections here at FIT Special Collections. Today I thought we would do a behind the scenes sneak peek at what you don't get to see when you join us for a research appointment. Come on in. I am here today in one of our three collections rooms, and generally speaking, our collection rooms are only accessible to staff. Due to the rare and valuable nature of the items that we collect, we maintain closed stacks. And what this means is that our patrons cannot browse the shelves. Rather, they request in advance the titles that they would like to see, and then those are paged and brought to the reading room for the duration of their visit. Behind me, you see nearly 500 manuscript collections in storage. Our state-of-the-art facilities were renovated in 2017 and our collections rooms are kept at 65 degrees and 45% humidity as these are the optimal conditions for preserving the paper-based objects that we collect. I pulled a few highlights from our collection to share with you today. Uh, the first one that we are going to begin with is collection number one, because why not start at the beginning, um, but this also happens to be one of the most important and also one of all of our favorite collections. Um, so if you'd like to take a peek alongside into the boxes with me, I'm going to share with you not only sketches, but also photographs of the work of the English couturier, Lady Duff Gordon. Uh, Lady Duff Gordon uh, started her career in London in the 1890s. Um, and then expanded her operations to New York, Chicago, and Paris during the 19-teens. Um, if any of you have seen the film Titanic, you might already know of Lady Duff Gordon because indeed she was aboard the Titanic and she survived. Um, and there is a character depicting her in the film itself. Um, so the items that we have here are um, from, the, uh, from the American portion of her work. Uh, whereas uh, the records uh, detailing her work in Europe are actually in the collection of the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. One of the things that makes this collection so special, aside from the fact that she was a very important and well-known designer during the day, is that not only do we have the original sketches of many of these ensembles, we also have the photographs. And this is highly unusual. Um, because it was very rare that a designer would be using photography during the 19-teens, um, simply for the fact that it was incredibly expensive still at this time. I mean, look at these. Um, if some of these look a little daring to you, um, these are indeed her fashion designs, but I will mention that she was also a well-known costume designer at the time, and she designed stage costumes as well as everyday wardrobes for many celebrities, uh, Siegfried Folly girls, stars of the stage and screen. In addition to the sketches and photographs and many of our designer archive collections that we hold here in FIT Special Collections, we also hold a wealth of designers' scrapbooks. And scrapbooks are really um, a really wonderful source of information because you get lots of different types of information compiled all into one spot. So here we're actually gonna look at um, one of the scrapbooks belonging to an alum of FIT, Stephen Burroughs, 
Uh, and Stephen um, graduated uh, from FIT in 1966 with a degree in fashion design. And um, here we see within just one of his scrapbooks some tear sheets from magazines and also editorial spreads that um, ran in these magazines. And here um, an issue of Vogue from the early, early 1970s. And I just love this photo shoot so much. It's very fun. It's very colorful. Um, the colorful kind of color blocking is what Stephen was really known for. And I just want to point out that the model here and here um, is a very young Pat Cleveland. And she actually writes about this photo shoot in her autobiography saying that Stephen had recently hired her to be a model and told her to be at his studio at a particular day, at a particular time, and there was a whole bunch of other people there when she showed up, and uh, they all just kind of picked things up, jumped in a van, and drove to Central Park, and this fashion shoot happened very spontaneously. Um, there wasn't a lot of pre-production or planning. It was just all of them hanging out, having fun in the park one day and taking photos, so that's really nice. Um, also, uh, something a really a career highlight perhaps for Stephen um, was was his inclusion among the American contingent of the infamous fashion event that was held at Versailles in France, um, which was a charity event to raise money to restore the palace, which had fallen into disrepair. But it was conceived of as a fashion show, um, kind of pitting American designers against French couturiers. And uh, Stephen was among those chosen for the American contingent. And he was the only black designer um, to show at the Battle of Versailles among the French or the Americans. Um, and here we have some press images. Again, kind of uh, little cut cutouts of magazines and tear sheets um, documenting the battle itself. And we get quite a lot of inquiries about the Battle of Versailles um, the original photos and other materials pertaining to it are quite rare, so we do have a lot of inquiries from patrons about this frequently. So the strength of our manuscript collections pertain to the history of American fashion specifically, um, but that doesn't of course mean that we don't have records in terms of what was going on in Europe. Um, and oftentimes, just as we've seen in Lucille, who was a British couturier who expanded um, to the United States, um, you know, European fashions were being imported to the U.S. And what we're going to look at today is a very special and one of our most requested collections, actually. Um, and these are original sketches pertaining to the offerings of the American department store Bergdorf Goodman. Um, and this is a really kind of fascinating uh, scenario in terms of how these designs by one Mr. Christian Dior were actually being retailed in the United States. Um, Bergdorf Goodman, um, like many other uh, custom salons or department stores, um, was going abroad and actually licensing the rights to create reproductions of couture house designs. This was all done on the up and up. Um, it was a licensing deal. Um, and so what happens is the benefit is, is that instead of traveling all the way fr to France, an American woman could actually go to one of her high-end local department stores if she lived in New York or Chicago or somewhere like that, and she could actually have a Dior made for her made to measure. Um, and one of the really great things, um, one of the very cool things about um, extant examples of these types of dresses and suits and whatnot that we have in museum collections is that it will have the Dior label right next to the Bergdorf Goodman label. And so I kind of like to call this scenario demi couture. It's not necessarily the full couture experience that you would gain um, in Paris. Um, or, or, or in France somewhere else, um, or at a different couture house in a different country, but um, it's about as close as you can get, and it saves you either the cost of a um, steamer ship at the time, which was a common mode of travel, or later an airplane ticket. Um, and so this particular collection are the exact models or designs that were offered by the Goodman, Burger Goodman Custom Salon um, all the way through to 1969. Um, and here we're looking at a selection of, of designs by Dior, 
but just about any um, other designer who was prominent at that time is also featured in this collection, including um, Cristobal Balenciaga, there's a little bit of Elsa Scaparelli, um, Hubert de Givenchy, they're all represented. And because of this, this is the reason why that this is one of our most requested collections. We hope that you have enjoyed getting a peek inside just three of the manuscript collections that we hold, but please remember that we have about 500 more for you to come and view. We are open by appointment only, and you can make an appointment to come see us by calling us at 212-217-4385, or alternately, you can email us at fitlibsparc at fitnyc.edu. See you soon.